Police Minister Becky Tele was interviewed in this morning's De Burger, where he stated his reasons for wanting to disarm all law-abiding South Africans of their firearms, including those people who want to lawfully and legally use those guns to defend themselves against violent criminals in the sixth most homicidal nation on earth, where there are over 40,000 cases of rape and sexual assault reported every year in a country where it's commonly accepted that figure to be horrendously underreported, as well as disarm people who are using firearms for extremely other legitimate purposes, such as hunting, sports shooting, collecting and training. Now, bearing in mind the fact that the minister commits a massive fallacy here, where he thinks that firearm ownership or rather availability of firearms in lawful civilian hands is a driver of crime and violence, which is false. There is no correlation there whatsoever. And in fact, the correlation has more often than not been proven to work in the opposite direction, which means too long didn't read, more guns, less crime. That, that little factoid escaped Minister Taylor completely. It's also evident to me that apart from not understanding the drivers of violence and crime in South Africa, be it social frictions, poverty, unemployment, or collapse of the education system, collapse of uh, industry and job opportunities and economic growth, um, the list goes on and on and on. The fact that he doesn't understand the socioeconomic drivers of crime also indicates to me he doesn't understand policing because if Minister Taylor understood policing, perhaps he wouldn't have failed to pay a critical, crucial service provider, which has now resulted in the police's PCAM system, which links the forensic evidence to criminal cases from being switched off since June last year. This has led to or resulted in 8 million plus pieces of forensic evidence being stuck in limbo, affecting 175,000 criminal cases where those cases can very well end up being thrown out of court, meaning tens of thousands of violent criminals can get away with their crime scot-free and face not a single day in prison. Equally, the farm permit system that keeps track of 500,000 plus SAPS firearms has also been switched off since June last year. So Minister Tsele pontificating about controlling civilian guns cannot even control his own guns. He's also, rather the SAPS is also, in the middle of three years of debilitating budget cuts amounting roughly 20 billion rand, which is 20% of the SAPS budget. Uh, that was before COVID, so it's probably and likely to be much more of a cut now than then. Whilst Minister Tele is increasing the VIP protection budget for him and his pals, you know, sitting there as MPs and ministers and politically connected individuals, while the rest of us suffer uh, in what I previously mentioned as the sixth most homicidal nation on earth, while he hides behind bodyguards. So Minister Tele doesn't understand policing, he doesn't understand budgets, he doesn't understand civil and farm ownership. Uh, again, because if he did, he would know that there are many, many countries with a far higher rate of civilian firearm ownership than South Africa. We're sitting at about the 85th position globally with a mere 9.8 guns per 100 people outranked by violent, murderous shitholes that uh, kill far more people per year than we do, such as Australia, New Zealand, Canada, Switzerland, the Czech Republic, Bulgaria, the United States of America, Sweden, Finland, Norway, Iceland, France, Germany, Italy, Belgium. Uh, Northern Ireland, uh, the list goes on and on and on. Oh, oh, wait for a moment. Those are actually countries with homicide rates far, far, far lower than ours. Even gun nut, gun mania United States with 120 guns per person, which is nearly, uh, you know, I, I can't do the math at the moment, but a significant number of, of guns more than our 9.8 per 100 has uh, one seventh our murder rate. So, uh, you know, there we go with that little myth that more guns equals more death which, and mayhem, which it certainly doesn't. In addition to this point, there is not a single example in the world over where civilians have been banned from owning guns, where there have been lower homicide rates. When the United Kingdom in the mid-90s banned civilians from carrying guns for self-defense and owning handguns and certain types of rifles, their homicide rates increased and were only brought back down after a disproportionate increase in police spending. The same for Australia enacted the National Farms Agreement in 1997. Homicide rates increased, was only brought down when a national level of police spending was uh, disproportionately increased above population growth, and the homicide rate finally came back down. Equally, Canada scrapped their long gun registry years ago already because it was expensive and didn't help them solve a single crime. And then, of course, Jamaica. Uh, in an attempt to curb their increasing homicide rate of 11 murders per 100,000 people, they enacted a de facto civilian gun ban in uh, 1974. And by 1977, three years later, their murder rate had doubled. 
By 1980, it had quadrupled and it has been increasing ever since hitting a record high in 2007. So as we sit here, listening to Bekitele try to defend his bullshit with some sort of argument about bringing murder rates back down, let us confront the very real fact that if government insists in pushing this bullshit through, we are probably going to see a marked increase, not probably, almost definitely going to see a marked increase in crime and violence as more South Africans are incapable of defending themselves legally against violent criminals. We will destroy that small bit of herd immunity against crime and violence we already have that's holding the tide back. And we're going to be just another murderous shithole where people are left to fend, to them, uh, fend for themselves in a non -function, with a non-functioning police force that finds it impossible since 2018 already, they by their own admission, to fulfill their constitutional mandate and the criminals will just have a field day. Stop this madness, stop this bull, comment on the DRSA, well, tender your submissions via the DRSA link below and let's get our voices heard and push this way, way back where it belongs, in the dirt bin, in the shredder and in the furnace.